Hi everyone, I'm thriller author J.F. Penn and today on Killer Thriller TV I'm here with best-selling author Jeremy Robinson. Hi Jeremy. Hi, it's good to be here. <laughs> yeah, it's so good to have you on the show. I've been reading your books for, for a while and I, I can now see you have uh, nearly 30 novels, I think, out yes. there. <laughs> novels and novellas, yeah. Which is which is stunning, considering you know from what I can see, you're still a young man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about that today. So first up, tell us a bit more about you and your writing background. Um, well, I actually started out as an artist. Um, I went to school for art, um, to college, and I wanted to be a comic book illustrator. Um, and I did that for a few years, and I kind of had an epiphany along the way of really what my art was all about was storytelling. Um, and so I actually went from uh, illustrating comic books to writing comic books and then moved to screenwriting um, and I wrote 13 screenplays and lived in Los Angeles and worked at an agency and did all that stuff um, and then I read uh, James Rollins novel, I think it was Subterranean and I thought this is amazing, people are writing novels the way that I write screenplays and it kind of opened my mind to the possibility of writing novels and so I gave it a shot. Um, and I've been writing novels ever since. So, and, and I've interviewed quite a few people who started with screenplays. Do you think that understanding that screen flow structure, I guess, helps you write such fast-paced books? I think so. I think it helps you write visually um, mm -hmm. because that's what you focus on. But that becomes a challenge then when you start writing novels is to think about other senses um, because you're actually not allowed to put those in screenplays because um, you're only writing for what people can see and hear. Um, and with novels, you're writing for all the senses. Um, but in terms of pacing, I think it helps. In terms of plot structure, um, it definitely helps because it's so rigid in Hollywood. And in some ways, it's liberating to then switch to the novel format and you can just write so much more, um, whereas screenplays are really restricted to 120 pages. So I read a number of your books, including your recent Island 731, which was just amazing. And monsters seem to be a real theme of yours. Talk about, you know, why you love monsters and, you know, a couple of examples of your favorite ones. Um, I'm sure a psychologist would come up with a horrible reason for why I like monsters. Um, but I would say it's just from a childhood uh, growing up watching uh, Godzilla. And here in New England, we had Creature Double Feature, which was every Saturday morning we would watch uh, two monster movies and uh, Ray Harryhausen. So I kind of grew up in science fiction and monster uh, television, basically, and movies. Um, and that's really just kind of stayed with me my whole life. Um, I, When writing, sometimes I won't have monsters. I think there's maybe one or two novels of mine that don't have monsters. And I get a little bit bored. Um, without them for some reason. I, I think they kind of, I really write about good and evil a lot and monsters kind of are a physical epitome of evil for me. Tell people a bit about Island 731 because I thought it was a fantastic book. Um, well, it's, a, it's about a crew that uh, is stranded on an island um, that once was used as a secret laboratory for Japan's notorious uh, Unit 731, which was their uh, research and development. Um, well, that's a kind way of saying what they did. Uh, they did human experimentation and vivisection and all these horrible things that I didn't know about until I started researching um, atrocities during World War II. And uh, most people will know about Unit 731, so I thought that was an interesting thing to pull into it. And kind of the the question that I asked is what would they look like if they had continued their research um, through to the present day? And so what is on the island is kind of my answer to that question. Mm, and it's, there are some scary monsters. Uh, in yes. That. <laughs> it came out really dark. It's one of my darker novels. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe that's why I, I enjoyed it because I definitely work in a sort of towards horror. And talking of horror, you also, you're also Jeremy Bishop. I am. <laughs> t t how does he compare with Jeremy Robinson and, and what's, what's he doing at the moment? <laughs> um, Jeremy Bishop is a horror author, so he's more dark in general. The first novel that I wrote as Jeremy Bishop was Torment, um, and it's, it's horribly dark and awful and I won't reread it. Reread it. Um, it was based on a nightmare I had. Um, so the first twenty-five percent is actually a nightmare that I had, and then it kind of builds from there. Um, and 
after writing Torment, I decided that Jeremy Bishop needed to write something a little more lighthearted. Um, so I came up with the Jane Harper uh, series. Uh, so it's a very sarcastic woman who is dealing with Viking zombies and zombie whales. and um, So it's very horror-based um, and very gory, but it's also very funny. Um, and so that's what uh, The Sentinel was the first one that I published myself um, as for Jane Harbor, and then Amazon actually came in and um, is republishing The Sentinel. That came out last month, and then The Raven is the sequel to The Sentinel, and that comes out on August 13th. Tell us a bit about um, The Raven, you know, what's, what's that all about? Uh, well, The Raven picks up where The Sentinel le left off, um, and I'm not sure how much I should say about what that is, uh, but she, Jane Harper is dealing with um, parasitical zombies um, that uh, can, they can control or turn into a zombie anything mammal. So it's not just people. Um, and it takes place on the ocean um, and involves a cruise liner and a bunch of whales and a whaling ship that is outfitted for killing giant zombie mammals in the ocean. It's a lot of fun. It's ridiculous fun. That's, that does sound a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that one. And, and I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting asking about each of your different books, because you, you obviously just, your imagination just runs riot. But the one I've just seen is, um, just while I was looking on Amazon, is the I Am Cowboy, which obviously mm. the word cowboy sounds like a Western, but it's not a Western, is it? <laughs> No, the irony is that I hate Westerns. Yeah, well, I was going to say, I'm not a particular fan of Westerns. So why would someone who's not a fan of a Western read I Am Cowboy? Uh, well, Cowboy um, is the main character, um, and he is from my novel Second World, um, which is a really fast-paced novel about uh, Nazis coming back in the present day and trying to take over the world and kill everybody. And Cowboy was one of the characters in that novel. Um, he was a conspiracy theorist who is also obsessed with cowboy movies. Um, and so he wears the hat, he has the two guns, wears the cowboy boots, and um, he's from uh, the Czech Republic. So he has a Czech accent, um, and one of his lines in the movie that I get a lot of fan mail about is, I am cowboy, I am gunslinger. Um, and so I named the first cowboy-only novella, I am cowboy, and if I do a second one, it will be, I am gunslinger. And um, I know people, authors hate the question, but you do have all of these sort of different books and different things going on. But do, do you get your ideas from those childhood movies or, you know, how do you refresh your creativeness at the moment? Yeah, it's, certainly some of it comes from early childhood. I actually, um, last November, published a novel titled uh, Project Nemesis, which is about a 300 foot tall giant monster that storms down uh, the northeast uh, of America and destroys Boston. Um, and so obviously that's influenced by Godzilla, um, which I watched religiously throughout my childhood. So as a novelist, I kind of think about what most makes me happy, really, and what fuels my imagination. Um, and then I get to put my own spin on that. And um, sometimes ideas come out of straight research just out of reading science magazines, but a lot of times it's based on the things that have inspired me throughout my life. Mm. I mean, in Second Second World, uh, there's a guy, you know, it opens with a guy underwater and he comes up and, you know, the earth has kind of changed, there's no oxygen and things. And um, I, I wondered about him and about your characters. How much of you is in your characters? It depends on the characters. Some of them are very similar to me. Um, in my young adult series, uh, The Last Hunter, the main character is Solomon, who is 50% based on my son, Solomon, um, and 50% based on me as a child. So it starts out in the early 80s, um, and all of Solomon's experiences in the early part of the first book is basically me. Um, and then he becomes my son, reacting to all the horrible things that are happening around him in the remaining five books. Um, but there are also many characters that are very different from me and very different in terms of what they believe and what they say. I sometimes get um, angry reviews or angry mail uh, about how I hate Obama or hate President Bush 
or so I get both sides or how I'm trying to convert everyone to a certain religion or what I think a lot of readers don't realize that my characters are kind of free to be whoever they are and I personally might totally disagree with them or if I knew them even my good guys I might dislike them um, so just because someone in my book strongly uh, what's the word <laughs> strongly believes, believes in something doesn't necessarily mean that I share that belief. Mm, uh, and and I, after so many books, I mean, yeah, you can, you can pretty much make stuff up. This is not autobiographical anymore. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I also don't want Boston to be destroyed by a 300 foot monster. Like, really? <laughs> so. Right. And, and of course, there's loads of excitement and kind of, you know, fast pace in your books. And I, I wondered, uh, you know, are you as exciting as your protagonists? And what, what oh. kind of thrilling adventures have you had in your life? I, I am not that exciting. And primarily because I write so much. Um, most of my time is spent in the office writing or with my kids. Um, so, I mean, that's an adventure. I have three children. Uh, who are all very young and like to play in my office while I work. Um, my biggest adventures, I guess I've, I've crossed the country a few times. I think I've seen 37 of the 50 states. Um, but I haven't done a lot of world traveling. That's, that's kind of the plan for the future, is to become a successful author and then be able to travel. Um, but yeah, I'm near, not nearly as exciting as my characters. <laughs> My whole life has been kind of living in an imaginary world. Yeah, which is why so, we're writers. <laughs> exactly. I could not handle the things that I put my characters through. Yeah, well, I think, I, and this is a common theme, I think, with thriller writers. You know, we, we deal with all this stuff in the books, but, you know, live yeah. quite a quiet life. <laughs> yes, fragile. Yeah. And um, so what, what is your writing space like? You know, I can see behind you, there's a little dinosaur on your shoulder there. You know, have you got action figures all over the house? <laughs> These guys are Godzilla and King Kong and Gamera and all those kind of Japanese movie monsters. Um, the rest of the room is, there, there are a lot of toys. There's, a lot, there's Transformers and other movie characters and a lot of paintings and posters and so it's really I'm surrounded by kind of pop culture that inspires me um, yeah it's a pretty big space in terms of offices I think it's 800 square feet um, but I feel it because I work on a lot of different things I do a lot of video uh, production we just filmed the commercial in the office yesterday and that was uh, about six people in here. Um, we had to rearrange everything. So I like my office to be fully functional in terms of uh, doing art. I paint um, a lot of video stuff. And so I like the whole space to be able to be used. Video stuff. Is, is that video stuff for readers? I mean, do you produce films as well? I didn't know about that side. Um, I've In the past, I've done video blogs. I do video trailers for all my books, um, and I do those myself. Uh, I've done a lot of viral video campaigns for my books, which are usually ridiculous and embarrassing, but I do them anyways because they're fun. Um, so I, I did 10 viral videos for Antarctic Rising when that first came out. And then for a humor book I wrote about ninjas, we did a bunch of ninja videos. Um, and yesterday's video, the commercial, um, I, it was actually more of a, a big deal than all the other ones I did before, which were kind of just me and my friends and a camera. Usually I, I do the videos with my friends and it's just kind of a low budget deal and we can all have pizza and have fun. Um, but yesterday was a promotional video for The Raven um, and I wrote a script for it and pitched it to Amazon and they actually agreed to pay for it. So we had a director, a sound person, makeup, um, and a, a puppeteer. <laughs> Um, so yesterday was, it was like a real production, um, and the video for that will be available on the 13th when The Raven comes out, and it's, again, ridiculous and potentially embarrassing. Um, I think especially writers are going to appreciate it, um, because it's, it's got some humor about being a writer in it, and, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. That sounds awesome. That's brilliant. So what can people expect from you in the next few months, I guess? Oh, boy. Um, let's see. So I Am Cowboy just came out. The re-release of The Sentinel just came out. 
in the next week, I will be releasing a prequel to the Chess Team series that is titled Prime and was co-authored with Sean Ellis, who wrote a lot of the, uh, the Chess Team novellas with me. After Prime is The Raven on August 13th. We're up to four books already in just three months. Um, and in September will be Omega, which is the fifth book in the Chess Team series. So we have Prime, which is the beginning of the Chess Teams, uh, kind of how the team all came together, and then Omega, which might be the final book in the series coming out in September. Um, in October, I might get a break. In November will be the sequel to Project Nemesis, which is currently titled Nemesis Rising. And then, am I up to six months? Christmas? Christmas? Oh, Jeremy Bishop has five novellas coming out starting in November. And that series is titled Refuge. Um, and so that will be November and then every two weeks through January. Um, I think we can probably start there. I think I probably have another book coming out after I think that. Every, every, every writer who's just listening is just going, oh my goodness, you just... <laughs> Who can keep up with this? It's amazing. It's it's great to talk to you. So where can people find uh, you and your books online? Online? Um, online you can find me at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, any other bookseller. All my books are available on Audible and iTunes um, uh, as audiobooks, uh, which is something that just finished happening about a month ago. I finally got all of them out in audio. Um, and you can find most of my traditionally published books uh, the hardcovers and mass market paperbacks in any store in America. A little bit harder where you are to find them. And your your website? Uh, JeremyRobinsonOnline.com or if you like horror, you can go to JeremyBishopOnline.com. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for your time, Jeremy. That was brilliant. Yeah. Thank you.